Alright, hey YouTube, what is up? This is the second of three videos um, on the Cheerston CX-117 setup. Um, I'm going to today be setting up the electronics. I just had to split this into three videos so you guys can more easily find uh, what you're looking for as well as uh, not have to watch through 30 minutes to figure out what's up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start um, with where we left off in the last video. Um, and that's going to be mounting the F3 flight control. Before we do that, uh, these wires, you can see uh, this hole right here, they do need to go up through that hole. Uh, you're going to want to just poke them through the hole here uh, and pull them tight, but uh, as you can see, not too tight, just kind of so they're taut there. There's not a lot of slack going on. Um, I'm going to do that for the rest, and I will get back to you. All right, so I got all the motors through, um, and I've peeled off the backing to this uh, 3M tape. So the video I watched, and um, what I also said earlier, is this is going to want to be in the very back. Uh, so the back edge is going to want to be flush uh, with the back of the drone here. So we're just going to place the tape in a similar position there. Make sure it's straight, and then gently push it down. Make sure you don't push down too hard in the middle, because you can see the legs do kind of pop up. Um, put your thumbs underneath there, push it down, uh, and there will be a little bit of sticky that goes through, uh, but that's all right. And then we're going to go ahead and just peel this tape off, just like that, right like that. And now this stuff is really sticky, so you're going to want to make sure that this thing is very straight. Uh, you can put it on here before you solder. Uh, that's what the video recommended. You can also solder beforehand, whatever you would like. All right, so now that we are on there, uh, you can see you have all the motors mounted, all the wires sticking out of here. So obviously you can see that these wires are a little long to solder on there. Um, so what you're going to want to do is get some wire cutters. Um, and if you have a wire stripper that goes down this small, uh, that's what you're going to want to use. I don't have anything that small, so I'll show you how to just do it with some uh, diagonal cutters like this. Um, but what you're going to want to do is make sure you find uh, the negative, you can see there's a little negative marker there. So looking online, um, I'm finding that it says the uh, side of the pin closest to the USB there um, is the positive. Uh, so again, this side, out of these two on all these motors, the side closest to the USB is positive. Um, so obviously red is positive and blue is negative and same with the uh, blue and white, or excuse me, same with the black and white on the counterclockwise. We're going to go ahead and I'm just going to show you on one of these motors uh, how you can kind of measure the wires and cut them uh, to and then strip them. So uh, you can see I go, just went and cut this a little past uh, the positive side there, uh, cutting it a little close, um, but I'm going to go ahead and now what I like to do is I just take these uh, diagonal cutters and I just kind of lightly spin them around this wire and not completely but mostly snip down on the plastic and then you can kind of just using your fingernails pick that plastic right on off uh, just like I did there uh, you can see so now the wire is exposed so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the soldering iron um, and we're gonna get this thing hot um, and then I will tin that and show you how to solder that. Um, this isn't going to be a soldering video, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, but if you do need some tips on soldering, please leave comments below. If there's enough interest, I will do a how to solder video. Um, I'm soldering at about 550, 600. Um, I'm going to adjust in between there uh, for this video. Solder that on and I'll get back to you once all four motors have been soldered. Uh, so you can see I have tinned all of the uh, pads here um, as well as the ones for the receiver. Something very important that you should do uh, before you get all the wires in here in the way, uh, you'll see these three very small pads right here. Um, and you can see the 1S marker here and the 2S marker there. So this involves soldering um, these pads together to allow this board to do 1S or 2S. If you don't solder any, um, I'm assuming there just won't be any voltage, but it could also mean uh, you're frying your board. So be very cautious um, to not solder all three together because that would also be bad. And we're going to be using 2S, so we're going to just solder these left two pads together. Um, so it's going to go just like this. And I have kind of a big tip on here for this. So we might have to jump down to something a little smaller. So just like that, you can see I've soldered these two together. Uh, right there into a blob, but there's still space between uh, the 2S and the 1S pad here. 
uh, meaning we did it right. It's nice and shiny, good solder, um, and that is going to allow you to use two S. All right, so you can see all the motors have been soldered. Um, again, the USB I'm kind of using as a marker. You can also use the front arrow uh, there. The arrow points to negative, and the USB is positive. So you can see I have my red wires in the back. Um, and my white wires in the back, and then my blue and black wires in the front. Um, some really small solders. Um, granted, they're probably not the cleanest here, um, but you can do that better. And then I've just soldered on uh, the battery connector. You can see the B- minus and the B+, plus over here. Again, make sure you get that 2S thing soldered uh, over so you can use it with 2S and you don't fry your board. All right, so now that that is done, all we have left is adding on the receiver and the camera, and then we're gonna power this thing up and see if we can't get it to work. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do first is get the camera on, and then um, because it's not really included in this kit, I'll show you how to solder on, or uh, where to solder on your receiver for your controller, but I won't go too in depth in that. Uh, so the camera here is uh, very nice. It's really tiny, uh, but it's actually 700 TV line um, camera with built-in transmitter. Uh, you can see the antenna up there. Yeah, so this one is 25 megawatts, um, and it runs on 2 to 2.5 to 5 volts. See on the back here, um, the wire, the uh, little lights for your um, receiver uh, channels, letters and numbers there, um, and then a little button to switch that. And it is on 25 megawatts, so that is what you're on. Um, it does come with a connector, um, so if you have a connector like this and you're wanting to uh, plug it up to that, then I would leave this on here um, and solder it right on. Um, I don't, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip this, strip it, and then uh, I'm going to solder it on. Alright, so I have got all the uh, components soldered, uh, so um, the instructions are somewhat wrong on the website. Um, so you can see here, this is going to be your receiver and you got your signal wire going to the uh, fourth and furthest pin. You've got your voltage, 5 volts going to the second pin, and the ground going to this first pin, um, and that is on the second row in on the right hand side if you're looking at it uh, with uh, this side being the front, um, as you can see, and then uh, I just have the signal, the voltage, and the ground uh, on the receiver right there, you can see. Uh, so I left this kind of unstuck so I can move this around. Uh, and again, if you guys have any questions about any of this at any time, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer it. Um, I also then soldered the camera uh, right on to these two pins, the voltage and ground on this uh, furthest receiver kind of bay over here. Uh, but just that those voltage works. Uh, the beeper will not work. Uh, voltage is what I tried originally, but that will not work because it's a beeper, so it'll go um, only when the voltage is set to low, which you could probably play around the settings on clean flight to make it always work, but better safe than sorry. Just put it right on there. And then for your receiver, you're just going to want to get some uh, double-sided tape. I have some 3M foam tape here, um, and then you just stick it down. Just kind of like you can see there, you just stick it down there. Again, this is the Furious FPV, so if you uh, have any questions about that, let me know. Um, I will be going over some controller and clean flight setup now. It's pretty simple, just a few basic things, uh, but you do want to make sure that before you do that, you have this bound to your receiver. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, the website also suggests using clean flight, uh, but there's some settings that need to be changed using beta flight. Basically the same thing, a few differences, uh, so I'll show you how to do that. You download that as a Chrome extension, just search beta flight, uh, and I'll show you that right now. Alright, so you can see we are now in um, beta flight uh, right now, and um, we are going to just go ahead and connect and show you a few settings that need to be changed to make this drone work. So we're just going to go ahead, plug this guy up without breaking anything. And you want to be really gentle with these USBs because they uh, often do come off. So then you're just going to go ahead and do connect right here um, and it will connect. If it doesn't, leave your comments below, but it's most likely because uh, your USB cord, try different USB cord, try different USB port, um, and then make sure everything is soldered correctly and make sure your board is not faulty. Uh, so you can see now the uh, readout. readout is showing how it tilts, uh, so that means we're good to go. 
first thing you're going to want to do is change uh, UART2 there. You're going to want to change that to Serial RX. So I already have that uh, selected, but you're going to want to turn that on to Serial RX. Uh, very important. And then in configuration, you're going to make sure that this is on brushed. It comes on uh, one shot, which is going to make the motors run. So if you plug the battery in and the motors are running, don't worry, that's normal. Uh, just change that to brushed. Um, and then I have this at 1020, which is really low, um, but it is where it starts to rev up. You could adjust that uh, maybe up 5 or 10 or whatever you wanted, uh, depending on how your rig flies. Um, down here, you're going to want to change two things. Uh, one is going to be this RX serial. You're going to want to change this from PPM. Uh, you're going to want to click the serial and then you're also going to want to select S bus down here. Uh, that's very important to making this work. Uh, just while we're at it, I do have expert mode on. Um, so in fail safe, nothing, just real quick, nothing down here has changed. In fail safe, um, I have it set to disarm and drop um, so that will disarm and drop this drone if it runs out of signal. Uh, PID tuning, I haven't messed with at all. Uh, you can see my controller is off right now, but you, if you're using um, <coughs> a FR Sky controller, such as the Tyrannus, you're going to want to change this to, uh, I always say Tater, like a Tater Top, but it's T-A-E-R, um, which is this bottom setting down here. Um, and then you can see here in modes, I added a arming mode with AUX1. If you want some more tips on AUX setup, if there's enough requests, I'll make a video on that. Uh, but that's done on your individual controllers. So I just have that to arm uh, when the switch AUX1 is flipped. Um, then I also have angle horizon, and then rate mode is the mode that's not set uh, for another three-way switch. And I have that set, so if you want to set it the same, that is how you do it. Make sure that's on a different AUX. Uh, nothing in adjustments, nothing in servos motors. Uh, or anything else down the way this you can test if you want your motors in this and that is all you're gonna have to do uh, some really small receivers are gonna involve some CLI commands uh, so if that is your board check the website uh, the furious FPV board does require some setup so check out the listing on that it involves turning off S bus inversion uh, and that will make it run so if it's not running that's gonna be your problem uh, so thanks for watching guys and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below if you haven't seen my how to build uh, the frame one quite yet uh, click back one video uh, by clicking the link um, up here in the corner uh, it's gonna be a card uh, click that guy uh, to see other videos and then the next video is gonna be a test flight on this guy so uh, check that out as well again if you have any questions leave them in the comments below um, and check this guy out look in the description uh, look in the description uh, below for the link to the furious FPV uh, receiver as well as this uh, awesome little mini quad for a great price. Uh, so check that out guys. Thanks for watching. See you again in another video.